Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get an additional public IP address working with your existing Azure virtual machine. So for example, suppose you already have an existing VM on which you host several websites, and at the moment they all share the same public IP address. But now you either want to add an additional website with its own IP or change one of the existing sites to have its own public IP. So getting that working is what this video is all about. Just a couple of things before we start though. Although in the first part of the video where we set up the new address it won't make any difference, in the second part I'm using a CentOS Linux VM and an Apache web server. So this may be slightly different to what you're using, but the logic will be similar. Here are the steps that we need to take in order to get everything working. And I'll go through each of these steps in the video. So first of all, you're going to go to your Azure homepage. You're going to select the network interfaces icon. You're going to click on the network interface link under the name column. You're going to select IP configurations from the menu which appears. Click on add, obtain and configure the IP. Create an ethernet alias on one of your existing adapters. And then configure Apache or whatever your web server is for the new address. Okay, so first of all, head to the home page of your Azure portal. And then you should see something similar to what's on the screen right now. The interface may change a bit over time, but the features generally remain pretty similar. And now click on the network interfaces icon. Now you want to choose the network interface that you want to work with from the left hand column. And you'll get another set of menu options appear. From here, you need to click on IP configurations, which will bring up some more options. I should note here that there are other ways within Azure of obtaining a new public IP address, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, this is probably the easiest way of doing it. Now click on add from the menu at the top, and this will allow you to obtain your new IP address. So there are a few options on here, which you need to set up. First of all, you need to provide a name in the name field. This can be more or less anything you want, and it's a name for this particular IP configuration. So for example, if your existing IP configuration has a name of ipconfig1, you might want to call this ipconfig2. Then you're going to change the private IP address settings from dynamic to static you'll then need to provide a local IP address you want to use. So you'll be able to see the range of addresses which is already being used locally by looking to see how your primary IP address is set up. You'll probably be using something like 10.0.0.2. So one way to do this is just to pick the next number in the range. So 10.0.0.3, for example. Then under public IP address, you need to click on associate and that will give you another option. And from there you can click on create new and you should then get a little box pop up. Now you need to give your IP address a name. So again, call it anything you want, but it's best to use something sensible like my IP2, for example. Your specific requirements may vary but for what we need here, we're going to leave SKU as basic and change assignment to static and then click on OK and then click on OK again. And you'll see the system starting to save the configuration. After a short while, you should see the new configuration listed and your new IP address. If you think you've made a mistake though, you can just delete it by clicking on the three dots at the end of the line and selecting delete, no harm done. Okay, now assuming you did create your new IP address, you need to create an ethernet alias so your web server can listen for traffic on the new IP. 
So one thing to remember here is that when you set up your web server, in our case Apache, we're not going to be telling it anything about the new public IP address. We're going to be telling it about the local IP address associated with the new public address. Anyway, first of all, we're going to get ourselves a Linux command line and we're going to run ifconfig to see what interfaces are currently active. You'll probably see something like this when you run ifconfig. Here we already have two aliases, eth0 colon 0 and eth0 colon 1. And you can see that they're attached to 10.0.0.5 and 10.0.0.6. But you may not have any aliases at all if you only have a single IP address attached to your VM at the moment. All right, assuming we didn't already have any aliases, then we would need to create a new file. We would call it ifcfg eth0 colon 0. In our case, where we already have two aliases, 0 and 1, we would call our next alias ifcfg eth0 colon 2. On CentOS and other Red Hat Linux distributions, these files are kept in slash etsy, sysconfig, and network scripts. On other Linux distributions, the location may be different, but the idea is the same. You need to create an ethernet alias for the network adapter. So the file you create is gonna look like this. And the two lines you're concerned with are device and IP ADDR, or IP address. In the device line, you're gonna provide the alias reference. So if your file is ifcfg eth00, then we're gonna make the device equal to eth0 colon zero. If your file is ifcfg hyphen eth0 colon one, then you'll provide eth0 colon one. Then in the IP address line, that's the IP ADDR line, you need to provide the local IP address which you associated with the public IP you created earlier. So that'll be something like 10.0.0.3, for example. Once you've done that, just save the file. Permissions of 644 are okay. Now you need to start up the alias you just created. And depending on the name of the interface you created, you'd start it using the if up command like this. And remember that you'll also need to use sudo or root. Once you started up the alias, then you should just check to see that it's active by running ifconfig again. And you should get a few extra lines of text show up displaying the new interface. If everything looks okay, then you're ready to modify your web server config file. Okay, this video assumes that the web server is Apache, but I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining Apache. All I really want to demonstrate is that you're not telling Apache anything about your new public IP address. You're telling it the local IP address associated with the new public address. So a very basic setup for a virtual host in Apache might look something like this in httpd.conf and you've provided the local IP and told it to listen on port 80 and port 443. Here we've already set up SSL so traffic from port 80 gets forwarded to the secure 443 port section. That's more or less all you need to do. Just remember to make a backup copy of httpd.conf before you modify it. And you'll also need to make sure your DNS records are updated for your domain to point to the new public IP address. And for any changes you make to Apache, you'll need to restart it before those changes take effect. That's about it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. If you like this video, please take a moment just to click the like and the subscribe buttons below. Your support is much appreciated. Thank you for watching.